Hello, I'm Grim Gridoo, and welcome to yet another A Builder's Guide to Nuts and Bolts. That's right, folks, two in two weeks. What a world we live in. Today's exploitable glitch tutorial was discovered once again by Wallavucci, the same genius of Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts Engineering Ingenuity who discovered the Spring Engine glitch. And so, much like my tutorial for the Spring Engine glitch, the link to Wallavucci's original video and channel is in the description below, and I highly suggest you check it out. They might not upload often, but when they do, it's usually something fairly interesting. And so, the Sticky Bow Engine. It's somewhat similar in build and functionality to both the Hyperdrive and the Spring Engine, though it does have strengths and weaknesses that it definitely sets it apart. And it is, like most fun glitches on Bandit Sewing and Bolts, largely reliant on the use of tow bars, which I'm sure at this point, this far into a builder's guide to nuts and bolts, people aren't too surprised by this. But let's not get ahead of ourselves and instead immediately go to the basics, which of course is what I always try to achieve when doing a, a builder's guide to nuts and bolts, as both the best way to figure out how a glitch works and to show people how to replicate it is to boil it down into its most basic form so you can really pinpoint what the actual mechanics behind its functionality are. And this was no real difficult task, as while Avucci's video did such a good job of showcasing the glitch that there was very little figuring out needed to do, and instead I basically just had to boil down mine to its most basic form, which is this right here. Simple, ain't it? All you really need is a sticky ball pointing forward, a couple of block spaces, and then a tow bar attached to your vehicle pointing backwards, and then connected to that tow bar pointing towards the sticky ball is another tow bar that doesn't really need to be connected to anything. And then all you have to do to activate this glitch is when you go into the game, press whatever button you have connected to the sticky ball to launch it, the sticky ball will launch into the tow bar, and your vehicle will either immediately start moving, or if it doesn't, give a light tap on your accelerator and it will start to move. It doesn't really matter how close you put the sticky ball to the tow bar, whether it be basically touching or six spaces apart, the glitch will still work fine. There does seem to be a little bit of difference in the speed. I think for the most part it seems that the closer the sticky ball is to the tow bar, the faster the vehicle will move, although this could be getting affected by other factors, for instance the extra weight that extending the vehicle added. At the point of seven spaces though, that's where it starts to become pretty unstable and the sticky ball will often lose its stick and at eight spaces, well, it's just not going to reach. So definitely aim for somewhere between touching and six spaces away. Before I get into talking about the application of this glitch, let's first dip into the speculation territory where I always try to attempt to explain why I think this glitch works. And I think it's probably in a very similar fashion to why the wrench hover glitch works and why the hyperdrive glitch works, where when a sticky ball hits an object it stops trying to extend or retract, but since that object just so happens to be a tow bar that's attached to the vehicle, the distance between them results in the tow bar trying to pull the ball, which just so happens to be attached to the vehicle, and so the whole thing gets pulled along forward. It's very much a pull yourself up by your bootstrap situation going on. Now, at this point, you might be looking at this glitch and thinking, but grim, in a world where we already have the spring engine and the hyperdrive, is the sticky ball engine really that useful? And the answer is surprisingly, yes, yes it really is. You see, the hyperdrive is far too fast and far too unstable to use in pretty much any challenge in the game. There are the occasional exceptions, but definitely too fast and unstable to use in any race. The spring engine solves this problem by being both fast and stable, but unlike the hyperdrive, it's not a passive engine. With the hyperdrive, you activate it and it just stays activated until you turn it off, but with the spring engine, this is definitely not the case. You have to click the button every time you want to go fast, and so if you're using in a race, you're basically constantly button mashing. It's not really so much of an engine now that I think of it, it's more like the spring boost. The sticky ball engine, however, much like the hyperdrive, is passive. Once you activate it, it stays on, though unlike the hyperdrive, it's not so fast that within the narrow confines of the races within the game, it's basically uncontrollable. And also, unlike the hyperdrive, it's far more stable. You're not going to be suffering with the sticky ball any race ending blowouts. And you might be thinking, but Grim, it's not really that fast now, is it? Well, no, it's definitely not as fast as the hyperdrive or spring engine. You can get a trophy Thomas time on air coconut with it, but I mean, that's a world one challenge, so that's not really saying much. But on the other hand, there's no reason that you can't use this glitch alongside another. You see, being so stable and seeing that the sticky ball engine really to function only requires the sticky ball to be connected to something hanging off of a tow bar, well, it doesn't really matter what that thing hanging off of a tow bar is. In the basic vehicle I showed, the tow bar wasn't connected to anything, and the sticky ball was just connected to the tow bar itself, which does lower the wear and tear, but you could have it connected to anything hanging off of a tow bar, and it will still work. 
You could, in fact, even have it so the sticky ball is connecting to the mechanism required to make the spring engine work. Much is the case with this vehicle here. Because the sticky ball engine is passive and the spring engine is not, this is a vehicle that is able to both fly around normally and boost, entirely utilizing only glitches and exploits. It is, on top of that, probably the fastest and most maneuverable vehicle I've ever built, which is not bad for one that has no traditional means of fuel and no traditional means of propulsion. And so there you have it, the sticky ball engine in Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. It works pretty darn well, especially in association with the spring engine, and both of the exploits that power them were discovered by the same person, so major props to Walavuchi for discovering them both. And once again, a link to his original video is available in the description below. Also down in the description is a link to my Twitter, and a link to the channel Grim and Grin Discord, the Echo Chamber, so feel free to also check those out. And as always, with all of that said and done, thanks for watching, and until next time, I have been and still am Grim Grindle. If you want a copy of this vehicle that combines both the spring engine and the sticky ball engine, there's going to be a layer by layer of it right now, so feel free to copy it and dissect it and play around with it. Don't, 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 don't,